Today on Craze Performance Repair, we're going to go over a couple of different lines uh, for fuel lines and their connectors, how they actually attach and function, how to disconnect them, how you can properly figure out how to get them apart and putting them back together. Putting them back together, which is usually very, very easy considering they are called quick connects. They are not necessarily quick disconnect, however they are quick connects. We will show you some tools and tricks to getting those off of there. Okay, so the first connector we're going to look at here is this style of quick connect. It has a kind of a squared off end on one end, and then on the other end it has this little tab. Now that tab you're supposed to push on to release these. This one ended up with a lot of debris and gave me a lot of trouble getting it to come apart. Okay, so there, it's it's back to where it's supposed to be, but it is very, very stiff. And I'm going to show you how this works in just a second. I'm going to clean it out here. Now, right now, I'm just working this thing back and forth to clean the gunk and debris out of these things. Sometimes they are a real bastard to get them to, to cooperate for you. And oftentimes, you have to, even before being able to get them to disconnect, blow them out with a air gun. Now, now this particular one, I had to blow it with the air gun and I had to pry inside here to release it. In order to release these, you're supposed to just push on this, but it doesn't always cooperate. So I literally took a pick and was pulling down on it in order to get this thing off the line because it's so stuck from the debris that gets caught in there. This line is in the back of this vehicle and it's just covering it dirt and grime from gravel roads and whatnot that this car has gone over throughout the years. Okay, so now it functions properly. We have it cleaned out. I'm going to give you a glimpse at what it's supposed to do here. So this line here, you can see the line would go and then this little yellow part would actually grab a hold of the back side of the line. The line has a, a barb on it. And when you need to release these lines, this little yellow tab on this side here, you have to push down on it. And when I do so, that, that yellow piece will go further inside the black part. Okay. So you see how it's down more now? It's kind of hidden and out of the way. And once I pull up on this, it comes up. And then it locks the line. So that's how this is a quick connect. So when you push the line at that side at an angle, it will push that yellow piece out of the way. And as soon as the line gets past it, it'll back into place. Now one of the most common type of quick connect fitting, it looks kind of odd from this view here. And uh, it's actually really, really easy to disconnect. If you look from the side of it, this one's also the same, but it's just a straight version of it. But you see this little tab here. Now this tab is the release mechanism. Normally when the line is on a vehicle, it will be pushing down on this tab because the line will be pushing out if it's under pressure. And what happens is that there's a little latch here. Okay, so you can see on this mechanism here, it's got this little clasp that hangs onto it if it's got pressure against it. So when you try and push it, it won't go. You have to literally lift up on it, then push that way, and it'll release. So here's what's actually happening when you push. In this case, I'm pushing down because I'm pushing away from the position, and then I push this out, and then I can release the line. So that's that style connector there. That's the one of the easiest, and that's actually my favorite connector because I don't need any kind of tool. Now another extremely common connector are these guys here, and this is a fuel line connector that would actually be attached to plastic line and then it would go to a metal line on this end. Now the metal line will have a barb on it, but you can see these little clasp on the inside here. Now a couple of the newer designs that are like this, they have this little plastic thing sitting on the metal line and those are really nice because all you need to do is pull that plastic thing and it will just disconnect this line and then you can pull the line off. So you, you just pull on it and the line comes right off. And that is a very, very super nice one if you get across, come, come across those. However, on the slightly older stuff and some of the stuff today still, but I, I haven't seen one in a while, they have to use these. Now these connectors here, you can see this one's the blue one and the yellow one. 
but we're going to move those out of here for now. Notice something. There's a difference in size. Okay, so every one is a little bit different in size. They go from small to large. Now, normally these kits, like if you buy them, they're sitting like that. But I find myself making them a pose like that because then they're just easier for me to grab. I don't have to worry about the other one being in my way for my fingers. So we're going to grab one here. And now this one would be for this size of line. So what you would do is you take this thing, shove it on top of the line. It would slip over it like this. Okay. Eh, for de demonstration's sake, we're going to do this. Uh, this is obviously not the right style of barb on here, but we'll pretend that it is. And so you put this on the line here. It's, it's sitting there. You need to get that off of there. So you take this guy and you push it down. It pushes those springs in, and then you can release the line. Now, these are actually very easy to take apart unless you get into a situation where this guy is sitting where there's a lot of dirt and contaminants because you can imagine you see that cavity there that could easily get plugged up with dirt and debris the good thing about these is usually there's plenty of room between the line and this shell that you can spray chemical in there and blow it out with air and get this thing to still come apart the downside is if these are full of dirt and debris a lot of times they will rot out and get destroyed so be prepared to repair or replace these if needed so another very common connector is this guy here. Now you can see this metal is separated from the plastic, but it's got a plastic thing. I don't know if you can see that. There we go. It's got like this little plastic thing inside there that is somehow perhaps pressed into this metal piece. I'm not sure how it works exactly, but this guy is another style of connector. Now these are kind of cool. So you can imagine the line goes inside of here, okay, and then when this gets pushed down, the line is now locked into place. But, oh, this one's actually broken. Well, I can explain it the best I can here. I do not have another one of these, um, but this one is broken. So normally there's a tab that sticks up here, and this tab would fold down, and then this little latch, you can see that, that little tooth there, that little latch would latch down on it. And then there's a tab on that piece that you pull like this, and it allows the latch to unlatch. So you flip that up, and then you push this in and down like that, and now the line can release. And that's how you do these. These ones can also get gummed up and filled with dirt and just kind of become a piece of crap. So keep an eye out for those. Those are very, very common connectors. Now, if you have one of these guys here, this guy is like a transmission or engine cooler line style connector. Now, this connector here has a special tool as well. Normally this special tool is metal if you buy the good one. This is one of those that comes with the very, very cheap and poor quality uh, tools that comes with a kit or whatever when you get a radiator or something. But you see those little three pieces that are holding the, where, where it would hold the line in, the little barb on the line? That's where these little slots would end up matching up with. So you'd put this in here, turn it until it falls into place. And then when you turn it, now watch the top of that little piece of wire there. When you turn it, see how the wire raises up, drops down, raises up. It's pushing those little ears outward. So this is the proper kind of a tool. There's a metal version. That's the one you want to get if you get one. Link in description. Now, that's the, the way you properly release it. I do not do that, and I'll show you what I do. Now, if you do not have a tool... To properly take this apart you can use a pick like this this is my favorite style of pick it's got kind of a funky shape to it but what you do is you find the end of the piece so you can see that's the end of the wire there okay you take a pick just like this guy and you pull it out like that okay now you see it's popped out of there and then you're gonna want to hold with your finger get close to the end of the pick hold the wire and pull it away like that once the wire is out, the line is free to come out. The only major drawback to this is a lot of times this is in a tight space, this little clip will go flying. And then there's another small drawback too, is if you pull too hard on this clip, these little tabs will actually stretch further away from each other. And if you put this clip back on with them stretched, it will not hold the line properly, thus ending up releasing and blowing the line off. So you wanna make absolutely certain that you don't stretch that out and if you do, you can always kind of give these things a little bit of a squeeze to tighten them up. 
But these lines, a lot of times, you want to make sure you inspect these very closely, right where this little lump is. Because if this line is very old, these little bumps will get worn by the line itself if, it, if it's vibrating against it or something, and then it'll let the line go. So make sure you inspect these clips. That's another reason I like to pull these versus using the tool, is because then I have a chance to inspect the clip for wear and make sure it's not gonna fail. All right, that pretty much wraps up our fitting thing, but if you have one more line that I didn't cover, be sure to leave a description of what you have in mind or maybe a link to a picture of it on Google Pictures, or Images, whatever. Uh, somehow for me to see what it is. Now there is one more line that I do not have here that I know of for sure that I want to cover quick and it's very common on AC lines. So I don't have one so all I can do is describe it but basically your, your line itself will look similar to this kind of and what it'll have is a longer bigger diameter shell and then your AC line with the smaller end will go on the other end of that and those lines they require basically the same thing as this but a lot of times there's not enough room to fit this plastic in there and I'm not sure why that is so there's one more tool kit that usually works better for those I don't think these are thinner than those I'm, I'm not sure what the deal is maybe it has to do with the fact that they have more of a taper on the end of them um, somehow but this kind of tool kit works for those AC lines they have what looks like an o-ring wrapped in a spring and uh, that's what you're releasing with these. So when you push this inside that line, it pulls that spring apart and allows it to release. Those lines can be very, very challenging because that spring will collect the finest little dust you could possibly imagine, especially if you have a little bit of a leak on the AC at that fitting. But uh, that's the last line I could think of. So with that, Fitting Madness Tips has ended. We are going to go ahead and throw some links to some of my other videos. Be sure to check those out. If you're new to my channel, I do a lot of various things from tech tips to actual repairs. And I may have something helpful to you or helpful to you fixing your vehicle. So like, share, subscribe. Be sure to check out the link below. Link below is full of information. And click on the links, check, check out some of the tools. I'll be throwing a lot of this in there. I may even include the pick. Who knows? But uh, thanks for watching Crazy Performance Repairs YouTube channel.